throughout history, technology has become increasingly advanced as the human race ages. Inventors, scientists, designers, etc. have had their goal of making our daily lives easier through new ideas of our everyday tools and other objects. One object everyone in the world uses is the many methods of transportation. Walking, driving cars, boarding airplanes or boats, or riding trains are all ways humans use to get around. However, as the population of the world is increasingly growing, and the faster pace of society, these methods of transportation are filling up the streets, railroads, sky, etc. with the impatience of today's generation for scientists and designers everywhere, this is a perfect opportunity to recreate transportation. Introducing maglev, a method of transportation that runs off of ideas of physics. Magnetic levitation is a way designers have worked with physicists to invent a vehicle that looks like a more advanced futuristic train or subway. Using the design ideas of a train, like following a track with a long series of cars, these two are different in the fact that maglev train has no wheels or axles or bearings, but float in midair. This concept, this concept is new to all humans and are starting to notice the speed of advancing technology. Maglev to use a method of propulsion that uses the magnetic levitation to propel the train type vehicle with electromagnetics. How do they work? Let's start with the basic knowledge of a magnetic. Like poles repel while opposite poles attract. This is a key concept of electromagnetic propulsion. Also along with magnetics, electromagnetics can attract metal but only for a small period of time. The biggest, most environmentally important difference between a maglev and a conventional train is that a maglev does not have an engine that requires to run off fossil fuels. Instead, uses electromagnetic suspension to make up the three main parts allowing the train to move. Huge magnetics under the train, metal coils, and also a large electric power source. Since the coil running along the track is magnetized, the huge magnets under the train have the same poles allowing the train to be levitated from 1 to 2 centimeters above the track. After the train is floating above the air in the track, the huge power source sends electricity into the coils along the walls of the train, creating a unique magnetic field, allowing the train to move forward and backwards by alternating the polarity of the magnetized coils. With this change, it changes the magnetic field to go behind the train, allowing a forward thrust in front of the train, allowing a backward fresh thrust. This only being the main and simplest type of maglev, the other two versions developed by Germany and Japan have the same concept but different methods branching off of this idea. Germany's idea is one that has been engineered so that the train wraps around a steel guideway with guidance magnets embedded in it along with extra magnets keeping the train levitating in the air at all times. On the other end, the Japanese use a step-up conductor that, conductor that the regular electromagnetic system called superconductor electromagnetics. This method is called electrodynamic suspension and is more efficient for the business of Japan and surrounding countries because of the fact that the superconductor electromagnetics will, stay, will still conduct electricity. However, it is extremely expensive since the coils of the superconductors must be chilled to an extremely low temperature at all times. With both of these designs, engineers have designed an even more advanced type called induced track with these two designs for low and high speeds. It uses room temperature magnets that accelerate the train only until the train begins to levitate. If the power is cut off, suspended wheels will slowly bring it to a stop. This is ideal, but they are expensive to run. Not nearly as expensive to run. The first ever time a maglev train was launched was in Shanghai, China in 2002, using the German company TransRapid International. Today, it is very big and can travel up to 430 kilometers an hour. By avoiding the busy streets of China at a much faster speed, an hour-long taxi ride can turn to less than 10 minutes. This technology has been recognized by so many countries, and all of them have plans to develop their own, but are unfortunately very expensive, as China has invested over $2 million. Here is a list of pros and cons of the three main types of maglevs. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you for watching.